Okay. Go straight to your <laughs> fail, 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 it fail. It sounded like a fart sound. Yes. <laughs> fart flipping. That was bad. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's actually really funny. Okay, sorry. <gasps> Ooh. One more. Well, hi, Shelby. Well, hi, Jenna. <laughs> Welcome back to Miss Willis Book Club Podcast. We are so excited to be here today. We are making our way through this Shatter Me series. Yes. Mm. And I will say I'm I'm happy with the improvement that this series has taken. Me too. In the, in the last Me book too. <laughs> so what did you rate this book then? I gave this book four stars. <gasps> what did you give the last one? I gave the last book one and a half stars. <laughs> Stars. So this oh my movement to four stars was a uh, very a happy surprise for very me. Very big jump. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Big jump. I also gave this four stars. But, but you gave the last book four stars too. I did, or four yeah. and a half or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I really liked the last one. But yeah. I think we also kind of chalked that up to Shelby being a little bit like... Might have been a little loopy. Might have been a little loopy after surgery. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. Awesome. Well, no. today <laughs> we are going to be covering Defy Me. Ooh. This is book five, and we only have one left after this. Yeah. This is the first full series that we've covered on this podcast. I love it. Are you liking series more, or do you like the one off books? Ooh, that's a good question. I like both, but I think it's fun talking about unfinished series because. You know me, I really like to try and come up with like predictions or try and pick out things that I think are going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's been really fun like predicting, which I know we did for this book and I'm excited to talk about that. I'm too. so excited to talk about our predictions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Do you like the series more or the standalones? I think, um, so when I'm reading by myself, I think I like series more mm-hmm. and I think I like covering series because it's fun. Because, like, you have more of the predictions and more of the things you could be like, oh, well, we talked about this last time and it's, like, quicker. But I think of, like, podcast listening, I might like the one-off better. So mm. I like that we do a mix of both. Mm. Mm-hmm. I like that. it. I like it. Awesome. Well, if you guys are enjoying the podcast, please go leave us a review. We want to hear what you guys think. Yeah. Open to any feedback you have. We're Absolutely. still learning too. So we love to hear things that you're loving or things that you'd like to see. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet, sweet. Well, let's get into a little bit of a spoiler free depiction of what Defy Me is even about. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the fifth book in the Shadow Me series. So We'll say spoiler free, assuming you've read the first four. If you haven't read the first four, <laughs> probably not the right episode for you. Um, but to find me, it, we're leading off from the last book of Juliet and Warner have been taken after uh, Juliet has had her experience in front of um, all of the other leaders of the sectors in North America. So there was like the hundreds of people that were there as she was supposed to be speaking to them at this big event. And then... They disappear, and she has woken up in, like, a little girl's bedroom and uh, is now, through this book, learning lots of things about her history, lots of things about her family. Warner is is learning more things about his childhood and family that he might not have known before, too. And in general, we're getting, like, a better picture for what the reestablishment has been doing all of this time or, like, what their goal is. So I feel like this whole book is, like, centered around all of that. Yeah. I think that is a wonderful depiction of what this book is, yeah. without giving any spoilers, of yeah. course. <laughs> well, and we talked about this, I think I talked about it in the last episode, too, but in Restore Me, that I was guessing, that was like, I felt like Restore Me, which is maybe the, the first book of the second trilogy, like, mm-hmm. within this series, right, was, like, very uh, internal thoughts, internal character, and... Um, then this book, exactly as I expected, was way more plot driven. Like I felt like the whole time yeah. we were seeing things happen, it was like a lot more <laughs> action packed. Which we've talked about that. Like that's your favorite. That is my favorite. Yeah, and so I think that that's why I had such a wide swing from one and a half stars on the last book yeah. to four stars. It's because it was book. more plot. <laughs> yeah, because it was more plot, and I really liked that. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know. That's how I felt. But I love it. Yeah. I love that you love this book more too because I, I loved the last one yeah, and I thought it was did. so fun. And um, so now coming to this one, it was like you're building even more on everything that you've uh-huh. covered. So it's like, I'm glad you like this one as much as I did. Yeah. 
<laughs> do you still well and it's funny I remember you mentioning maybe when we were covering the second book is that like imagine me or something um that some people didn't like Kenji yeah I'm like still waiting for that moment because I even through this one I still love Kenji love, yes. as much as I loved him in the first yes, book me so. too <laughs> like me Kenji too. is still my favorite character so same here I thought that was really funny too because <laughs> I, I was like been keeping that in mind be like oh well, maybe people who have finished the series have like seen something that we haven't seen but the Kenji's... same you like it more yeah I just <laughs> might like we make him more too well exactly. words are hard oh my god <laughs> It's just been that kind of a day. This book made me like him more. Mm -hmm. There we go. That was that came out better that time. Me too. Me (laughs) too. Perhaps had a glass of wine before this started. We might have. (laughs) We might have. Well, I guess that puts us in. Let's get into the spoiler section. Well, let's talk about what we're drinking first. What are we drinking today, Shelby? We're drinking some mimosas. Mimosas. This is a nice Sunday fun day. Do you want to tell us why we're having champagne? Are we getting into spoilers? I guess it's kind of a spoiler. Yeah, sure. (laughs) I feel like, yeah, I guess it's kind of spoilers. It's it's a major spoiler (laughs) because it's at the end of the book. Okay, go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) We're drinking champagne because on Warner's 20th birthday, Juliet basically threw him a huge birthday party and they drank champagne. Did they drink champagne? I thought they drank champagne. Oh, I don't know if they did. I just... When we were talking about drinks for this episode and what, what we should have, I just knew there was a birthday that was celebrated, so mm-hmm. I thought champagne would be a good toast. But I don't remember if I they actually so. had it there. I th- yeah. Maybe. I thought they did. I don't know. Maybe they didn't. But either way, we are celebrating Warner's 20th birthday. Well, cheers. Warner's so, turning 20. 20. Cheers. <laughs> Aaron turning 20. Aaron. Okay, how weird is it to go from, like, calling him yeah, Warner? Yeah, different names. Right? Yeah, it's a little odd. Yeah. It's so spo- again, spoilers. Yeah. Spoilers, spoilers. Spoilers. Don't listen. Spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> um, yeah, it was definitely weird to get used to calling them different names, like calling Juliet, Ella, and calling. Oh, that's weird. Warner. To me, so. I mean, Warner and Aaron. I guess we had kind of heard interchangeably mm-hmm. a little bit over the last couple books, so that was lots of a thing. But um, definitely hearing Juliet called Ella was weird. I thought that was so odd. It was, that was a hard transition a Agreed. little bit. Yeah. Agreed. Well, especially because, like, even towards the beginning of the book, and I liked the way that the author did it, like, in the beginning of the series where we did, like, the cross-outs and, like, the random yeah. shit. I feel like this was a little bit easier to follow because, like, you'd cross out Juliet and put Ella, and so that, to me, was, like, oh, okay, like, we're getting more of a feel for it, even though yes. it still felt, like, abrupt and it felt odd. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I agree. And it, I did think it was interesting, too, because, like, as these memories are unlocked through the book, and I think everybody starts to become a little more comfortable with calling Ella slash Juliet Ella <laughs> instead. But I did really like it. And it was, like, way towards the beginning of the book that um, when is your... Did you hear that? What was that? Like a motorcycle or something, maybe? Yeah, I heard that. Sorry, that was a really weird noise. That was really (laughs) odd. Um, Oh, sorry, that really threw me off for a second. (laughs) So you're thinking the beginning. Um, (laughs) Nazira, when Mm. she's talking to Adam, and, like, towards the very beginning of the book, and Adam is, like, kind of trying to say that Juliet is turning into something that she's not, or things like that. And Nazira is the one that is saying, like, she, she says, what they did to Della... Ella over the course of 12 years is unspeakable. So yes, I'm sure you remember a very different person, but I don't think she became someone she wasn't. My guess is she finally gathered the strength to remember who she had always been. And I did really like, cause I think especially with Adam's relationship with her, mm-hmm. and we talked about that previously when Juliet kind of made the switch from Adam to Aaron, mm-hmm. that Aaron liked her for who she is now. And Adam kind of yeah. only liked the meek version of her. And so I felt like that was a really nice reminder too. That's like, just because she had been hiding who she was or her personality or her internal strength all those years doesn't mean that's not who she really is. Exactly. I really. I and then we cool. start to find out, like throughout the book, that like all of hers and all the children of the commanders are all be like their minds are all basically being erased, so they can't remember anything. I did not see that coming. I didn't see that coming not either. Not at all. But I did love the oh. 
every time we see each other, it's the same. And, like, even yes. seeing, uh, <laughs> like, Anderson's reaction, like, why is it always like this? Yeah. Loved So that. that was actually my favorite part of the book. Yeah. Where it was, like, no matter how many times you guys, like, mm-hmm. fall apart or are distance or whatever, like, you still come back together and you love each other just as much as you did before. That was, Yeah. I really liked that. And that yeah. was coming from, I, I think I had come out a little bit bitter out of the last book of not loving it. But <laughs> yeah. that moment really did, like, as I started to see how much mm-hmm. history there was, it made me really like them together as a couple more, too. I did too. Which was nice. And it actually, this made me kind of appreciate the whole series a little bit better because, yeah. like, this really was set up where, like, you start to learn more about, like, why Ella was even placed into the asylum yes. and how Warner was placed and Adam was placed and everything was orchestrated behind closed doors. Yeah, I had <gasps> marked that, too, when, um, what does it say? Oh, when, um was it that was talking to Adam and he goes, he liked experience and Paris pit you and Warner against each other on purpose. And I was uh-huh. like, literally my jaw dropped when I read that. Cause I was like, I mean, I knew that Anderson was like involved in a lot of stuff. And I, I kind of figured that he knew about Adam, but I think I didn't realize how purposely orchestrated it was yes. to have Adam specifically involved or to really try and like, challenge Warner's relation Warner's gut reactions yes. to Juliet by involving Adam because it worked right it, like, it absolutely it worked exactly the way that he wanted it to yes. and it to me it was so cool as a reader because you don't really see it coming yeah. like you see like oh man there's a reason these brothers hate each other there's a reason they like didn't know about each other all all this stuff well you don't realize that every single thing that has happened in the book has been orchestrated yeah like okay that Ella and her sister Emmeline were like completely orchestrated for this experiment. Oh, they were like <gasps> test tube babies. Oh my god! Also, just like oh my god, what terrible parents! What terrible that parents! That was so hard to read of her mom yes. doing all that stuff to your own child. Oh my god! And like insert like just literally torturing. Like I'm Ella only a over dog and mom, and I still couldn't even I, imagine any of that this. That was really nuts to read. That was really hard to read. That invoked a lot of emotion. So what did you think? Um, I had this tabbed as like a, holy shit, didn't see this coming. Um, their mother was actually the main orchestrator of like freaking everything, like above Paris, where she's like, oh, we put Paris in this type of a situation so he would do X, Y, Z. Did I miss that? When did that happen? Um, let me find it here. Yeah. I mean, I got that she was, like, way up there, and that there was maybe some things about, like, her kids that, like, Paris only knew pieces of, but I guess I did not understand or, like, read into it enough to know that she was so much higher than he was. And maybe I... Maybe I did too much. Um, no. <laughs> maybe I read into it a little bit no, that's more. Okay. Uh, but there was a very specific page where the mom's name is Evie, and she's Evie, talking yeah. about uh, like how she like had these test tube babies, and they're like physically altering them like at every chance. And right. that imagery, holy shit! <laughs> yeah, altering the genes. Yeah, and so like they're continuously like trying to make them better. Right. And so there was that part where she's like talking about how she's, like, changed her physical features, how she's changing her mind, how she's doing all this stuff. And then she says, like, when we give you to Anderson, like, these are the specific things that we're putting into place. And when Anderson isn't doing all of those things, they step in and, like, do other things to, like, get him on the right path. Oh, I totally missed that because I had read, I don't know, the way that I had interpreted it when I was reading it is that there's clearly a panel of leaders right there's Mm -hmm. uh leaders of the reestablishment, like in these different commanders uh yeah continents the supreme commanders Mm -hmm. so for some reason the way i had read that was that all of the supreme commanders had decided on one way that ella was supposed to be placed and treated and stuff and that paris just kind of went against that and like did his own thing oh yeah it was like like because he Even really just wanted approved. to, like, be against his son for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, That's because he was just, like, up. salty about that whole situation. Yeah. But I guess I didn't necessarily see it as, like, E.B. being above the other Supreme Commanders. I think it was that 
Paris was just going against the grain. Oh, okay. I but can I see that I don't know too. if that's true. That was just how I had read it. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. we're okay to have different opinions. Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. I, yeah. And maybe I just got like that, like really strong vibe from the way mm-hmm. that she said it was cause I was like, oh my gosh, she's orchestrating everything. I mean, I think that from a like technical perspective, I definitely got the sense from a, uh, like technical and medical perspective mm-hmm. that Evie is really leading things. Yeah. Well, cause then they say that the mom and the dad are, we don't learn that much about the dad, but yeah. We don't hear very much about him. We know that, like, they're, I think they're physicians or they're researchers. Some type of, like, something. Yeah, a doctor or physician or something. So that was really interesting. What did you think about the fact that they had altered Anderson's DNA? Were you surprised that he was alive? Yeah. But we also kind of called it. So in the last podcast, we kind of said, like, oh, we think his mother's going to come alive. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, she's not going to be dead. Yeah. (laughs) But I think. One of us had made a comment of like, well, what if Anderson's alive? No, we saw him die. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. No, I was, I was listening back on that too. And I don't think I expected him to be alive at all. Like I really thought that that was yeah. th- done and over with, I but too. I really thought that his mom was going to be alive. And so now knowing that Anderson's alive, I'm yeah. like, not sure if I think the mom is still going to be alive, but I'm so curious. I was really surprised by that though. Well, because as soon as you said that all they did was just like take her stuff away and they were just gone. I was like, wait, no, she still has to be. I don't know. I I still have a little inkling that maybe she's out there. I'm kind of in on it too. So yeah. (laughs) Oh, but speaking of predictions, yes. Should we talk about what you got totally right? Oh, you guys, I freaking called it. (laughs) You so called it. So Emily, uh, Juliet slash Ella's sister. Tell me about what her power is. Oh my gosh. She can basically like manipulate the minds of other people. And I love In mind speak. In mind speak. And I love the way that they described it. Like I had like tears welling up in my eyes. Because okay, there was one point where Juliet was like like basically running through the corridors and she's hearing somebody speak in her mind. Yes. But she's not yet realizing that it's somebody else. And then she's finally like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, somebody's speaking to me. And she finally gets to the tank and sees her. And... That was rough. Oh my gosh. The imagery of what they have done to this poor freaking girl Yeah. is so sad. But then you realize that she's been able to hone in on her abilities yeah. and, like, mind speak to, like, single people. And she's been saying things to, like, all of the children of the Supreme Commanders. Well, and giving back memories. And Not even just mind speaking. Oh. She's been giving back memories that they have lost. So I had um, I had a prediction while I was reading. I've been trying to be more mindful of making predictions. Nice. And one of them I had was when they cut Juliet open and they were basically, like, bloodletting her. I said, oh, I'm predicting that this is actually her bringing her memories back. So, like, replenishing with, like, new blood and just, like, I, I thought that maybe that was her memories coming back. And then I said, JK, it ends up being her sister. Yeah. Which I thought that was so cool because they did this. She did the same exact thing for Nazira and for Warner. Mm. <sighs> yeah. I loved it. It happened, like, I kind of predicted it a little bit, but it was more just, like, speculating. Mm -hmm. The way that it actually happened, I thought, like, was really special. Yeah. The only thing is I still don't totally understand. So I know they kind of said, like, what her ability was creating electricity or something. Okay. Emmeline. But, like, I think I still didn't really understand why her parents had her in this cage of water. Like, I think I didn't really understand what they were, like, what they were benefiting from having her in that situation, what they were getting yeah. out of it. Because I get that they were like, oh, we're trying to, what, break her and hone her ability to be able to use it for ourselves? Well, I mean, I they kind of succeeded, though. So my idea on that is when you just said they were trying to break her, like, that. I think that's really what they were trying to do. And so they were only trying to give her, like... You don't have to focus on your life. You don't have to focus on breathing. You don't have to focus on eating. All you have to focus on is influencing the minds of other people. But, like, it's clear that she wasn't going along with it, so it's not like she was feeding ideas for them. Well, she might have been up until this point, though. We don't know what was happening before all of this. I guess the way that she talked with Ella, it made me think that 
her parents have been, like, trying to wear her down for so long, Mm -hmm. but maybe not really getting anything out of it. Yeah, oh, when they were saying that, like, oh, you're stronger than her, you, you can break... No. What do you mean? Well, like, obviously that's what they wanted, was to be able to, like, use her to influence the minds of the world. yeah, for sure. But I don't... I didn't get the sense that they had actually been successful in getting her to do that for them. But that's why I think they keep trying to break her. Mm. Is because she... Just seems like a big investment for not very much Well, Well, okay. Well, here's the thing, though. In their minds, if they're like, if we break her to this point, she'll only do what we want. And she could influence... Maybe she did influence Paris to do certain things, Mm. influence the other commanders to do certain things, and then power chain, the parents are, like, up at the top, Mm. and Mm. people don't even know it. Mm. So, like, long game, they could have potentially, like, had the upper advantage, but they didn't end up having it because Emily was so damn strong. She couldn't be broken for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty wild, though. I didn't, yeah, I didn't Ugh. see it coming the way that it did. It was really sad, though, when she's like, please just kill me, just kill me. Jillian's oh, like, no. Oh, my gosh. No, we're going to save you. How, how does she think she's going to save her? I don't how know. How do you think she's ever going to live any type of reasonable life after that, after her body is literally disintegrating? Well, the, oh, the imagery where yeah. they, like, she's basically got, like, No a eyes nose. and no nose and, like, yeah. just like bone and skin and whatever. Such. Lips oh. sewn shut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like sewn to with a um, respirator. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like she can't she can't live on land. She can't live outside yeah. of the tube that she's living in. Yeah. I'm glad. Okay, so we see a lot of the times in like young adult fa- young adult fantasy where like the main character will sit and wait and like no, we'll wait. We'll get you out. We'll get you out. Juliet was like, okay. Killed the mom, and she's like, I'm out. I'm so yeah. sorry. I'll come back for you. I actually really appreciated that because, like, I feel like any normal person would, would run dip and then come to. back. Yeah. Where, like, a lot of the times they just sit and wait, and then they end up dying. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was really refreshing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely agree on that part, too. Mm-hmm. I, I, I did like that. And her reunion with... Aaron after they've been separated for so yeah. long and then after like they've both gotten these memories like separate from their time together and then come back after having <laughs> the memories reimplanted yeah. that was really sweet too I was laughing so hard though when he's immediately like oh I'm gonna just propose to her on the plane why do I need to get on my knee why do I need a ring <laughs> I was laughing which is so funny so I was actually gonna say that was also another one of my favorite that was my favorite moment my favorite was Kenji talking to him about it was yeah. my he's like no you need to bring you need to propose you need to get on one knee and Aaron is like what are you talking about yeah which okay uh, I feel like I should just share my sweet story then <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> because we love that yeah my husband did real well when he proposed. How long so ago was sweet. that? Like four years ago. I don't even. Oh my god! Isn't that crazy? I think it was like four I think years ago. It was like four ago. years ago. Holy crap! Um, but yes, my when my husband proposed to me, we were. So I'm a really big Minnesota Vikings fan. Skull Bikes, and <laughs> um, we were in New York City. We had gone there specifically to go to the uh, Vikings Giants game, which is technically in New Jersey, but beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> But so we were in town for the weekend for this game, and we had gone to the game in the morning, and the Vikings just absolutely destroyed the, the Giants. It was a great game. <laughs> you guys had so much time. fun. We had gone to, like, this, I don't know, hibachi place for dinner. I drank a whole bottle of wine by myself. I'm <laughs> feeling great. We're in the middle of Times Square. It's, like, 11 p.m. on a Sunday. Uh, and but that's good because it wasn't, like, no, it was such extraordinarily a crowded. Yeah, it was not super crowded. And, yeah, it's, like, 11 p.m. on a Sunday. And so James is like, oh, well, let's just let's just go to Times Square. Let's, let's just go check it out. I'm, you know, kind of drunk. Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so I <laughs> completely think past it. And, um... We're standing over the sewer grates of, like, the subway, which, or, like, the, the grates that are, like, kind yeah. of on the subway, which I will insert picture here of what those grates look like, <laughs> just so you can see. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, we. So he's like, "Oh yeah, let's let's take a picture. Let's take a picture, whatever." And he gets down on one knee in the middle of Times Square, <gasps> and he is clutching this ring so hard because he doesn't oh want to drop it. Oh my god! I didn't it. even think about. <laughs> Because he's standing with no ring box, again, over these Jane. subway grates. <laughs> and, like, if he would have dropped that ring, that ring would have been gone, gone forever. It's my mom's diamond. I was going to say, this is a very important diamond. Yes, it's my mom's important. diamond. Important. Yes. So, yeah. So, anyways, the whole point to say, James did well with making a big grand gesture in literally yes, the middle of Times Square. Everybody else is, like, taking videos of us around. People I don't know taking videos oh. of us around. But that was a... It was... It was a nice big gesture. He was on one knee, had the ring. Well, the Aaron funny needed part, to learn from that. Aaron <laughs> needs to learn from this. And it's funny because before that trip, too, so I was going to watch her dog. Yes. <laughs> she, oh, my God. I forgot about this. I'm sorry to bring it up. Yeah. It's kind of funny, though. So she goes to it's bring her dog to my place. Apartment building. Uh, my apartment building. So, like, you had the code to get into my apartment. But no. Didn't I let you in There's, or something? No, there is How no did you code. Get in? You had to have a gate because somebody okay. Oh. Backing up. <laughs> this is one of it was one of those apartment buildings where you need one of the like RFD like t- tags. Like the key fobs. The key fobs, yeah, to like badge into the building. To badge into the building and then into her apartment, right? And so I know her apartment number. I've been there a bunch of times. So we pull in, it's like six in the morning, because we have an early flight. But she knew we were coming. Yes. So we've been Texting or calling her since I left my house 30 minutes prior. Haven't heard anything. So we're standing outside the building. Somebody else uses a key fob to fob me in. Yeah. So then I'm standing in front of her actual <laughs> apartment, like, banging on the door. I did not wake up to my alarm. <laughs> or her banging on the door. Or anything. <gasps> yeah, it was rough. I literally had to leave my car uh, with my dog in my car, parked in her parking garage and hide the key in the wheel well Ooh, I and know. i was like you better get my dog and my car better not be stolen i know and i mean and the, everything ended up being everything fine like i fine. got the dog like an hour later everything and i felt fine. i felt everything was fine horrible. i was flipping shit though i was so scared i was like my poor dog she's yeah. in the car by herself and when i got her she was all like hi i'm just too <laughs> love you like, she was like totally fine but like it was still oh, i mean I frantic oh and I so was, was i when i woke up i felt so 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 bad i didn't wake up to my alarm or banging in the door, nothing. And I, I was forgot like, that was the, the start fuck? to that trip. It was, and so it was funny because when you, then when he proposed, you like text me right away, and then you're like, "Fuck you, I'm putting my phone down. <laughs> you don't need any more." And then the next day, you were like, "Told me everything." But <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, "I'm so sorry." <laughs> that's so funny though, because that's that's how you know. Not how close of friends we are because it didn't I'm still matter. Tell you, I was like, it didn't matter how bad I was in that moment. I was like, okay, well, you're still the first person I'm gonna exactly. text, but that's all you get. And that's me too. Speaking of proposals, um, I don't want a big proposal like that. No, that's, nah. Yeah, I mean that's right. That's yeah. I'm not gonna say that's not what I would ask no, for, but like it, it was very sweet, perfect. but it wasn't it was, what I yeah. needed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like my perfect one is like in front of maroon bells. We're going on a little hike, and that's where you propose. <laughs> So we're planning. Gianni, on, listen up. <laughs> we're planning on doing an Aspen trip every year, and so we're actually in the oh. process of planning when and how we're going to do that this year. And hmm. so I'm like, hmm. do you have a ring? I don't think so. <laughs> but I wouldn't. I don't know. I know that I want to spend my spend the rest of my life. Speaking of, <laughs> yes, I think that Kenji should replace Reese as number one book boyfriend on TikTok. Dude, I don't get how, I mean, I love Aaron, but I don't get how he's above Kenji. I, like, just I literally don't Kenji. get it at all. <laughs> he's my favorite person in this series. He has been since the first book. Me too. I mean, and this one just solidified it because one, he always asks for permission and advice yes. on what to do ever. Like, yeah. okay, you know that a woman is going to have the best advice and knowledge. Okay, sweet. You win. Also, he doesn't hide things from his friends or love interests. Reese hides things from everybody. Yeah. And he doesn't come off as a jerk to people outside of his inner circle. Yeah. Well, and even in that, it's like a joking way. Jer- exactly. It's like It's like almost like a, like overconfident making fun of himself kind of thing. You right. know, it's like not actually, I don't know, rude yes, or mean exactly. to anybody. Yeah. Well, and he's like such a, even if he jokes about it, he's such a thoughtful friend and like partner in how he's willing to sh- like share information or like really be there for somebody. Yeah. Exactly, and that's why I just think, like, we 
love resand. I I yeah. love resand. But sometimes when I'm reading this, like Kenji would probably be a better actual boyfriend. Partner. Yeah, a yeah. partner, an actual partner. Where like Reese is like, if he would have done things like that, he would have pissed me the fuck off. Yeah, it's I I'm excited to reread Akatar because me too. I think it's been so many years since I've read it that and I've read so many more books with other parts. That was like one of the first fantasy romances that I had read. And I feel like I've read so many others since then that I'm really curious to see what my thoughts are on Reese after reading it again. Yeah. Because it's been so long that now I'm like, eh, he's fine. But like maybe when I read it again, I'm going to feel really tied in the first way I, yeah. the first time I read it. But I don't know if I will. Cause I know, yeah, me too. like obviously there's things great about him and Farrah, whatever. But to your point, I don't know that I necessarily feel like he's the best partner. So on that note, Fuck Mary Kill. Oh. Resand, Cassian, and Kenji. Oh, Mary Kenji, a thousand Mary percent. Kenji. <laughs> uh, I think I've said this before when we did this. Fuck Cassian, because I just feel like he'd be a great lay. Great so lay. I guess I gotta kill. Gotta kill Reese. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe that I gotta kill Reese, but. You're gonna you know. kill Reese. <laughs> the book talk girlies are going to come after me for that. Yeah, they but are. Yeah, they I, are. I think I would, I would kill Reese, fuck Cassian, and oh marry Kenji. Gosh. I love it. But like, how can you not marry Kenji? He's, He's like the, the best most, in all aspects. The, the oh most reasonable actual partner that you'd want to be with for exactly. life. You know? That's what I mean, too, though. It's like thinking like actual real life and not just like fantasy on paper life. Like, Kenji is number one book boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, prediction, do we think that him and Nazira are going to get a chance? Oh, duh. Woo! For sure. Also, For sure. they totally turned down the one bed trope. That was so <laughs> funny. I was, I thought that was really funny, too. Like, how awkward. And also, there's like, oh, well, I just, I assumed, no. No, absolutely not. Like, can you imagine what's going through Kenji's head in that point? Like, well, wait, 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 I, I kind of wanted to, but. <laughs> I thought it was really cute, too, after they have their moment um, when they're all, like, making out and getting hot and heavy and stuff. And, <laughs> oh, I loved that scene. And he's, like, just, like, so upfront about being, like, well, I don't do casual. He's like, if you're not into it, then we're not doing this at all. Yeah. And I was like, yes, Hell stand up yes. for yourself and what you want. I yep. really appreciated that. And I was, really respected yeah. that. And obviously you can tell that's going to change because you could tell Nazira was even like, but, 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 I can't. Well, I'm also like, girl, you are, you are acting a little bit like, <sighs> what's the word for it? Um, Hard to get. Hard, I think less less hard to get more I can't have what I want to actually be happy mm. and I can't think of like one word that describes that but mm. like she was like oh no we can't do this because of my position and it's like shut up girl just be happy and go be with Kenji he's gonna make you real happy and clearly from the way that that scene was playing out oh. he knows what he's doing yeah that was nice oh, so us girlies love the lead in we, we love, love Kenji we love Kenji, and we love leading into spicy time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, we need some of that good action beforehand before you actually get into things. And yes, Kenji, sir. Yes, sir. And Kenji was like, clearly the stand of that. Where? Yeah, Kenji can. I, I will marry Kenji. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I gotta he say He will keep about you it. happy long time. <laughs> Happy long time. Happy long time. Happy long time. Happy ending. <laughs> Many happy endings. Sorry, bad. <laughs> oh man, yeah, we love Kenji. We love Kenji. Oh, we just act. I know that probably Aaron is supposed to be the top in this one, but sometimes I just still always have that. Like as much as I like him more now. Yeah. Anybody who's like really over dramatic, over emotional in that, I'm always <sighs> like, yeah. <laughs> like that's a lot. I kind of said this with like another book that we read recently, but like I really do not like the young marriage trope. Dude, I did really not like that when I didn't like it. I that, and I think that's part of why I liked the scene with Kenji being like, "Back the fuck up, dude!" Same. Like, there's a lot that's happened to Juliet recently. Don't make this another big thing that she needs to think about. Like, she literally has she even turned eighteen yet? I, she oh my might gosh, be I don't remember. Now. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't but remember. like barely yes i'm like i get that's great i'm glad you guys are getting along really well and you feel that strongly but and then he does it anyway 
Yeah, he, like, waits, like, a day. <laughs> literally a day, and then after their sexy time, he's yeah. like, okay, I just literally can't hold myself. Okay, you typical male. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, you're I having other people being like, oh, oh wait, no, wait, 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 this is what she's going to want. And he's like, I'm going to do it anyway because it's what I want to do. No. Right. But I don't know. Even if she said yes, I don't feel like it was what was best for her was to ask Agreed. in that time. So. so do we think in the next book that that might like, do you think it's going to be delayed? No. Do you, no. Do you think they're going to get married I right think away? this is a YA series and that they're going to roll uh, with it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it when it happened in the last book that we talked about. I think I liked it yeah. even less in this one since yes. we had, especially we just talked about it. So I was like, wow, that's so cliche. Like, why is your feeling of like, oh, I'm going to be an adult and make an adult decision. Like, I'm going to get married. But I mean, think of how you felt when you were in high school. Like, I feel like marriage was a big thing that was pushed in your mind as something. Not for me. I, don't, I feel I like society with, really pushes in your mind that, like, that's the yeah. goal of life is to get married. Yeah, absolutely. But it's sad kind of think about it a little bit because I was with somebody all, th- like, throughout high school. And uh, we ended up breaking up because we didn't have the same goals. And, like, I was able to kind of push those feelings aside and, like, be like, we don't we don't want the same things. And it was the hardest thing. It was one of the hardest things I've done. But... Mm. I think it was really, like, something you should be able to, like, step aside and be like, but is this actually going to work long term? Oh, I agree. I, I just meant from, like, a... Like, a YA standpoint? Yeah, like, it, when I was 18. I'm yeah. sure I also was like, oh, my God, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Like, I think I just would read this differently uh, if that, I was okay, that's true. 18 to 20 versus reading it at 30 years old, you know? Yeah, that's true. I guess you're right. We do have a little bit of a different perception right. than, like... A younger crowd. Yeah. Which I'm glad, though, because then you kind of see that, like, this is being pushed on young women and men, and like, early on in society. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what you have to live for. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, okay, besides whether or not the marriage will happen. Yeah. What, do you have any other, like, major predictions for where you think the series is going to go in the last book? I I can't get it out of my head where you think the mom is going to come back. Mm-hmm. I think that would be so cool. So I think that it's really awesome that, like, now they're in this, like, separate sector that, like, has this really cool ability to, like, keep themselves hidden. Yeah. And so now hopefully they can, like, hopefully we can end off the series with them living in a more normal, safe society but I feel like that would make for a really boring last book. Mm. And so something crazy has to happen. Right. What are your predictions? Yeah, I've been trying to figure that out, too. Because at some point in the next book, I think the other Supreme Commanders <gasps> with Ooh. Anderson are going to... Like, there's got to be something if they all come into it. Oh, yeah. And I feel like something with the other kids of the Supreme Commanders I think have got to come into. Like, I think that the other kids are going to come to this secluded base that they have, basically. Um, I think we're going to get more training scenes in uh, in this book. And then, yeah, I don't know. I'm, like, trying to figure out how I think it's going (laughs) to still Me too. I still have been really hoping that James will come back and be, like, have some moment of being really helpful me too because they you know brought up they brought up his healing ability Mm -hmm. in the what two books ago and they didn't really talk about him at all right or three books ago i guess because i don't think in this in these last two books they haven't really talked about him right i don't think they have either and so he's kind of just been like off to the side that he's still at like sector 45 no he's with all the rest of the people i thought is he not he's with adam and everybody Oh yes, they did get they did get like so they're transported. In a, so they're the in the next. secret, whatever the secret yes. compound. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, but he's still. I don't know. I think they just talked about him, teased him out yes. enough that I think he's got to come out and do something. Is my guess. And what? I might have a prediction. Yeah. So, oh wait, I have an idea. Oh, let's hear. What is it? What oh, is it? Adele, that I'm thinking about this yeah. for sure. Okay, so you know how Anderson has gained this ability to heal. Yeah. But Adam's ability is to take away people's abilities. <gasps> That's how they're going to kill Anderson. Adam oh. is going to be able to, like, uh, quiet... Anderson's ability like to heal. Ability. And Wait. that's how they're going to be able to kill him. Oh my gosh, I hope that's what happens. Oh, I 
love that. Because all this whole time we've been saying how useless it is. Yes. Oh, maybe he'll useful. actually. <gasps> he'll help kill him and Warner together. Aaron, they're gonna kill Paris Anderson together. Oh yes. my gosh, that is such a great prediction. Yeah. I really hope this is what happens. I okay, was thinking. Yeah. So do you remember how we're still waiting for some of the memories and stuff to come back? Yes. I'm wondering if James can help heal that. Oh, like if he'll be able to like heal people's mind a yeah. little bit. So like Ooh. we've been talking about some like physical qualities, but what if the healing can also lead to like mental healing, intrinsic mental healing? Ooh, that would be cool. That would be so awesome. Are there still a lot of memories that I thought that they had gotten most of the memories back now? But what about for like the other children of the Supreme Commanders or like? I thought Emily had been sending them to everybody. I thought she said that. Or someone else I don't remember that. if it was everybody. I know it was specifically um, Emma Juliet and Ella. Er, thank you, mm-hmm. <laughs> Ella Juliet, and then em- Emmeline was sending him to Warner and Nazira, and I don't know if she was sending him to Hater because remember she Nazira was. was saying like she said, "Do that- you remember this?" And he's like, "Kind of." No, because she said, because Ella asked basically like directly to Nazira if the other kids were going to be like if if they had caught up if they were on board and Nazira made a comment that they had gotten the same memories back but oh. that didn't necessarily she didn't know if that meant that they were on their side oh. but that they had gotten the memories okay okay yeah. so, so they I probably think, have the memories I think back. they all have them yeah maybe there's a different way that James can play with it like mentally then yeah. I don't I don't really know what that could look like but it's just a just a thought. <laughs> I know. I'm still waiting to see. I still think some of the other kids are going to have abilities, too, that have, they've been keeping hidden. I think they like may all have abilities. Yes. Yeah. And I think that would be really awesome to see because kind of like you were saying last episode that both Nazira and Warner have them. Mm-hmm. But, like, when Nazira is talking about her brother, like, he clearly doesn't know that she has it. She's right. never told anybody before. For sure. But, like, Hader probably felt the exact same way. Yeah, that's. I still think there's going to be a moment where, like, all the kids realize that all the other kids have things, too. <gasps> oh, my gosh. And I feel like there's going to be some point in the next book where the ex-girlfriend Aww. is going to have to, like, <laughs> be helpful with Juliet or something. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder if she's, my prediction is like, she's not going to come back into play. You don't think so? <laughs> I don't think so. But mm. it's part of me just like, she was, to me, she was like a little bit insignificant mm. to like the rest of the plot. But I do think that maybe like all of the kids of the Supreme Commanders are going to come together and they're all going to like overthrow the government basically. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that's what's going to happen. And this is sure. YA, so it's going to be a happily ever after. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, were you surprised when you learned that um, the world doesn't actually look as messed up as it is? That that was Emmeline? Yes. I I was was really shocked by that. But then I was like, oh, so all these times that um, Juliet had seen birds. Yeah. Like, was she actually just really seeing birds then? And she was seeing through her sister's, like, screen? Um, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. Crazy. But how about this, though? Leading on to that. So, Adam had a a tattoo of the birds, right? But Aaron had also been seeing birds, maybe because, wasn't he? Was Aaron seeing birds? When? I thought he also had some, like, big idea with the birds. Maybe I'm totally I don't know. off. But you, you we might be do right, know I don't remember. <laughs> that Adam had a tattoo of the birds. Yes. And so I'm wondering if all of the kids with powers can just start to see a little bit through the charade that's starting to be put out. Oh, so you think that all the kids have a little bit of an ability. I do. Mm-hmm. At least, I mean, all of the but kids the that other, we've talked about. Yeah, but like the other kids from Omega Point haven't been able to see through it. But they were underground. But they were like going on missions up, up above ground and stuff too. Yeah, but that probably wouldn't be, like, a point of priority. We're, like... To be looking around, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So, mm. I'm, like, maybe... Like, there was too much emphasis put on this, like, bird Birds. that Juliet was seeing yeah. in the beginning. Like, I hope there's something that comes full circle, but who knows if it actually will. <laughs> I think there's going to try to be some, like, beautiful cinematic, like, emotional moment yeah. at the very end of the last book. I think so, Of too. her, like, looking at the blue sky with the birds flying around. I think that's what... It's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> I am predicting that right now. That that is gonna be. Yeah. What's it's gonna be one of those very like supposed yeah. to be super touching scenes. I and think. it's like ah cliche. Yeah. Flip through. 
Yeah. We're more for the plot, plot and less for happy endings. Well, see, that's funny that you say we're more for the plot because I feel like you're usually more. For, you say you're characters. more for like the character internal struggle and growth. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I think <laughs> I definitely she am. likes the plot. I do. I love the plot, and I'm like, there are some series where there's too much romance, and that's like the only focus, and I'm like, can't get through it. But. <laughs> But there are other books where it's, like, only plot and no romance where I'm, like, okay. Like, I love a great mix of both. Uh-huh. So, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. We'll see how I feel about it at the end of it. But I feel like the ending of books, I'm always just, like, I'll flip through this. Like, it's... it's yeah, I, I usually don't really care about the epilogues either. No. Same. Same. Well, do you have any other thoughts on this book? I'm excited to finish up the series, yeah, honestly. I've I'm, liked it. Yeah, this book made me a lot more excited to finish it. I was yeah. really scared to read this book, and I liked it so much more than I expected. And that yeah, makes I did me too. very happy. And it looks like this, the last book is like... Is it smaller? No, it actually... It's bigger, it's bigger than Defy Me. Oh, nice. Okay. So it's probably the same... It's probably like a 400... Between four and 500 page book, so... But these are super, it's been nice. They're that fast reads. So yeah, fast. I mean, I read this in a night, too. Yeah. I did, too. Yeah. Like, one afternoon, evening, whatever. Yeah. Um, do you think, so they keep talking about wanting to replace uh, Emmeline with Ella. Do oh. you think that they're, like, do you think there's going to be any movement there? I think they might try. I think that there was also something else put in there that Anderson was trying to get, like, Aaron captive. Because he was like, oh, we're undergoing the, the next, like, phase of the mission. Like, it didn't work with Ella, so now we're going to use you. Mm. And so I think that they're realizing that Emmeline is starting to deteriorate, and so mm. now they're trying to find somebody who's as powerful to replace her. Mm. Um, I think they're going to try. I think if the kids all band together, then they're not going to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. So I think that they could try. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. That, that would be really interesting for sure. I, I also thought it was kind of crazy to see that, like, there were different agendas between different, like, higher powers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, even just within the reestablishment. Well, and yeah. I did like that I think this book gave us a little bit more background of, like, when the reestablishment was first coming into power. Oh, I loved that. That yeah. was, yeah, that was a great part. That was great. I loved it. What were your least favorite parts of the book? Um, oh, good question. I don't know that I have like a specific point that sticks out as like, this was my least favorite part. I think it's funny, but maybe a little bit extreme how fumbly Kenji is with Nazira. Mm -hmm. Like, I I think, you know, the intent is sweet, but it's maybe like a little bit too extreme to be like a little cringy. Yeah. Um, so I guess maybe that. But Maybe what that. about you? My least favorite part was when Warner tried to propose. Um, like before he actually did it? Yeah, before yeah. he actually did it. Like when we were in his POV and he was like, I'm going to do it. This is what I'm going to do. Blah. I was like, oh, I don't like this. Yeah. And then it led into my favorite part of the book. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm really glad that that was not actually the proposal moment. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Do you have any other thoughts on this book? No, oh, I think that I think that covers it. I think so too. Yeah, I'm excited to finish this out. <laughs> yeah, excited to finish the series. Awesome. Well, so, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, guys. Please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That we would love to know what you guys think. Yeah, and don't forget to join us for the last book in the Shadow Me series. We'll see how far off we are on all these predictions. Oh, I can't wait to see where we fall in these predictions. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll see you next time, guys. Bye. <laughs>